From this distant vantage point, the earth might not seem of any particular interest. But for us, it's different. Consider again that dot. That's, That's here. here. That's, That's home. home. That's, That's us. us. On it, everyone you ever heard of, every human being who ever lived out their lives, the aggregate of all our joys and sufferings, thousands of confident religions, ideologies, and economic doctrines. Every hunter and forager, every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilization. Every king and peasant. Every young couple in love. Every hopeful child. Every mother and father. Every inventor, inventor and, and explorer, explorer. Every, every teacher, teacher of morals. morals. Every corrupt politician. Every superstar. Every supreme leader. Every saint and sinner in the history of our species live there on the mote of dust suspended in a sunbeam the earth is a very small stage in a vast cosmic arena think of the rivers of blood spilled by all those generals and emperors so that in glory and in triumph they could become the momentary masters of a fraction of a dot Think of the endless cruelties visited by the inhabitants of one corner of this pixel on the scarcely distinguishable inhabitants of some other corner. How frequent their misunderstandings. How eager they are to kill one another. How fervent their hatreds. Our posturings, our imagined self-importance, the delusion that we have some privileged position in the universe are challenged by this point. Light. Our planet is a lonely speck in the great enveloping cosmic dark. In our obscurity, in all this vastness, there is no hint that help will come from elsewhere to save us from ourselves. It's up to us. It's been said that astronomy is a humbling and, I might add, character building experience. The Earth is the only world known so far to harbor life. There is nowhere else, at least in the near future, to which our species could migrate. Visit. Yes. Settle. Not yet. Like it or not, for the moment, the Earth is where we make our stand. To my mind, there is perhaps no better demonstration of the folly of human conceits than this distant image of our tiny world. To me, it underscores our responsibility to deal more kindly with one another and to preserve and cherish that pale blue dot, the, the only home, home we've ever known. The most astounding fact. The most astounding fact. Is the knowledge that the atoms that comprise life on Earth, the atoms that make up the human body, are traceable to the crucibles that cooked light elements into heavy elements in their core under extreme temperatures and pressures. These stars the high mass ones among them, went unstable in their later years. They collapsed and then exploded, scattering their enriched guts across the galaxy. Guts made of carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and all the fundamental ingredients of life itself. These ingredients become part of gas clouds that condense, collapse, form the next generation of solar systems, stars with orbiting planets. And those planets now have the ingredients for life itself. So that when I look up at the night sky, and I know that yes, we are part of this universe, we are in this universe, but perhaps more important than both of those facts is that the universe is in us. When I reflect on that fact, I look up 
Many people feel small because they're small and the universe is big, but I feel big. Because my atoms came from those stars. There's a level of connectivity. That's really what you want in life. You want to feel connected. You want to feel relevant. You want to feel like you're a participant in the goings on of activities and events around you. That's precisely what we are, just by being alive. I know that the molecules in my body are traceable to phenomena in the cosmos. And it's our 15 pounds of gray matter that figured this out. There's a kinship with the cosmos that resonates deeply with New Age thinking. But I'm not apologetic about that. It's what we find. If whatever we find is resonates with whoever, go ahead, take it. We're in one of the greatest centers of neuro neurophysiology. I want somebody to put electrodes on my head. And when I reflect on our kinship with the cosmos, when I do the calculation that shows that a 15-ton meteorite that we have in the center of the Rose Center for Earth and Space, it's an iron meteorite, when I do the calculation that shows that if you take all of the iron from the hemoglobin of the people in the tri-state area of New York City, you can recover that much iron out of their blood and realize that the iron from that meteorite and the iron from your blood has common origin in the core of a star. Tell me what part of my brain is lighting up because that excites me. That makes me want to grab people in the street and say, have you heard this? That it's not simply, as, as Carl Sagan said, we, you know, we are star stuff, but there's a more poetic and I think more accurate way to say it. It's quite literally true that we are stardust. In the highest exalted way, one can use that phrase. And so, I feel, and I use words, I bask in the majesty of the cosmos. I use words, compose sentences, that sound like the sentences I hear out of people who had revelations of Jesus, who, who go on their, their, their pilgrimages to, uh, to Mecca. There's some commonality of feeling. I know it. Well, I don't know it. I want someone to do that experiment. Because the day you do, if the same centers in my brain are excited by these cosmic thoughts as a what are going on in the mind of a religious person, that's something to know. That's going to be really interesting finding. Because what that tells me as an educator is, let me offer the universe to people. And they'll start taking it in. And they'll start achieving those feelings that they had before. And I don't so much care whether they abandon previous feelings, I've got an offering that keeps growing, that keeps becoming more majestic. When it was announced that we were going to cancel the Hubble telescope, the greatest outcry to not do that was not the astrophysicists, it wasn't from within NASA, it was the public. It was all over the op-ed pages and the talk shows. The public took ownership of the Hubble Space Telescope because the universe was coming into their bedroom into the living room, onto their computer. They were a participant on the frontier of, the dis of discovery. And as far as I can tell, if you let them, let them know that it's not simply that we're in the universe, but in fact, given the chemistry of it all and the nuclear physics of it all, not only are we in the universe, the universe is in us. And I don't know any deeper spiritual feeling than what that brings upon me.